Good morning, everybody. Welcome to day three of Biomarine. We're excited to be here. We've had a great couple of days. I'm Alex McCann. I'm the lead for science and technology at uh, Nova Scotia Business Inc. We're the lead to business development agency in the province of Nova Scotia and Canada. And one of the things that we're always looking for is trying to understand what's happening, what's going on in the market, so that we can help our local companies as well as companies that might be interested in doing business in the province. And we're always looking to uh, industry experts to give us some insights into what are the, the current trends and what's going on. And our topic today is going to be what are the commercial trends for marine compounds? And we have a great uh, panel of experts here today. Uh, we have Charlie Bradington from Glycomar, and we also have Bruno Sommer Ferreira, did I say that correctly? Perfect. Close enough. <laughs> uh, from Portugal, from, from Biotrend. And I thought we would uh, start the morning off by uh, allowing our panelists to give a little bit of insight about themselves, uh, their background, uh, what they do in their company, and a little bit of uh, a background information about uh, what their company does. And I think that'll help us uh, frame the debate and the discussion today about uh, the new trends uh, for marine compounds. Uh, Charlie, do you want to start us off? Yeah, thanks, Alex. Uh, morning, everyone. Great to be here. Um, as Alex said, um, I uh, am the founder and managing director of a company called Glycomar, uh, located in Scotland in the UK. Um, Glycomar has been going for 10 years, um, specializing in the discovery and development of uh, complex carbohydrate products um, f with applications in a wide range of markets, pharmaceutical, consumer health care, cosmeceutical, nutraceutical, and some food applications. Um, my background really uh, is in biochemistry. I actually started off in medical biochemistry, studying osteoarthritis, and then switched quite quickly into marine biotech um, and saw an opportunity to put the medical application of molecules uh, together with the marine source for novel chemistry. And that was the impetus to start Glycomar, um, but with a, with a focus, a real focus on discovery of novel polysaccharides um, with biological activity. Rather than having some kind of blanket screening uh, approach, we have a very focused chemistry and a focused um, biological application. Good, thank you. Bruno? Okay, thank you, Alex, and thank you for Biomarine to organize, for organizing this wonderful event. Um, so just a few words about myself and the uh, Biotrend. So I'm a chemical engineer. Um, I have a PhD in biotechnology. And um, as many of us, I started my career uh, at the university doing research. Uh, I did research in microalgae systems, uh, in bacterial systems, yeast systems, fungal systems, even animal cells and animal stem cells. Uh, so I'm kind of a weird guy because I've touched pretty <laughs> much every form of life available that you can put into a bioreactor. And that's exactly what I do and what my company does. Uh, we're specialized in bioprocess development, mm -hmm. uh, specialized in the translation of good ideas of good biological systems that seem to be promising on the lab setting towards the industrial scale. So what we do is uh, optimize processes, uh, try to uh, intensify the processes, uh, maximizing yields, maximizing productivities with the ultimate goal to reduce the cost of the processes and to validate the processes at larger scales and obtain the robustness that you require to proceed to the commercial scale. Um, we are typically involved in um, applications which are non-pharmaceutical. Um, we do work for some pharmaceutical companies, but normally uh, our target and our targe the target markets of our clients are mainly markets in which the cost of production is really an issue mm -hmm. to be successful in the marketplace. Hence the very strong focus on the process optimization and having everything running extremely efficiently uh, and smoothly in the, um, in the, in the, at least in pilot scale. In-house we do have uh, a state-of-the-art facility for process development. We can start from one milliliter and go up to 250 liters in-house and this is a uh, fermentation-based capacity. So we work mainly with uh, heterotrophic uh, microorganisms or cells that can be grown heterotrophically. Um, but we do have access through partners, both in Portugal and uh, across Europe, 
to capacities up to 100 cubic meters. So we can really support our, our, our clients uh, uh, throughout development from the very inception at the lab scale to the universal scale. Okay, that's, uh, that's, quite, a, that's quite a description. Well, I think uh, that's, that's a great uh, way to get us uh, started off. I think you know we're seeing a lot of competition in the market. Uh, companies are looking for novel ingredients, uh, new chemicals, and trying to push the the boundaries of the the sector that we're that we're operating in. And I'd like to ask uh, both of you guys, um, you know, what do you think? Why, why are marine ingredients so important? Why are marine co compounds so exciting? I mean, what is the what is the reason? What are the things that consumers benefit from uh, in terms of? accessing m marine ingredients. Uh, Charlie, you look like you have a little smile. Why don't we start yeah, with you? Yeah, I'll go first. <laughs> um, and I'll start talking about the pharma world, because that's where Glycomar started, really focused on pharmaceutical discovery and early stage development, um, uh, specifically in inflammation. That's always been our, our main focus, is, is anti-inflammatory drug discovery. But uh, pharma world, you know, it's, it's a well-known fact that they have a patent cliff. Um, a lot of their drugs are going off patent, becoming generic. They're looking for new discovery. Their, their discovery machinery, their combinatorial chemistry approach didn't work. It didn't deliver the new compounds, the new drugs that they need. Um, and as from the consumer point of view, there is still a you know, significant unmet need in the clinic. So from a pharma point of view, there is a kind of resurgence and has been over the past five to 10 years to go back to natural products, go back to nature to solve these problems, address the unmet clinical need, and deliver the new pipeline of drugs. And that covers all chemistries, not just polysaccharides, which is our speciality, but all chemistries, and obviously looking for um, small molecules. And you can all probably think of you know, really well-known examples, antimicrobials, for example, or anti-cancer. And there have been some significant successes of compounds emerging of marine origin, obviously not produced um, from a marine source when it's a pharmaceutical, they're now synthetic, but of marine origin um, come to market. Pharmamar, for example, with Yondelis, which came from originally from a, a sea squirt. And that interest is there in pharma to deliver new compounds to them to address unmet clinical need. Mm -hmm. I, I think, in fact, you had uh, mentioned that you, your company has a couple of products that are, that are coming to market. Do you want to talk about that? Would that, would that be sure. relevant to, uh, to this? Okay. Well, as I say, we, we do early stage um, discovery and development, and, our, and our, our aim with a pharmaceutical is to get it to phase 2A, so proof of concept in man. Um, we have one pharmaceutical program at the moment, which is in preclinical development, and it's a polysaccharide product, which originally we found in marine worms. Um, we're not going to make a pharmaceutical for marine worms for lots of reasons. Um, so we then had to think about how to make it. Polysaccharides cannot typically be synthesized. They're too complicated. So we have a semi-synthesis based on a bac bacterial precursor, which we then modify to give the structure required. And that is in preclinical safety evaluation. Um, we also have some consumer healthcare products where they have over-the-counter non-drug, but kind of medical device uh, classification products. Um, and they're using some well-known polysaccharides, which are originally coming from seaweeds, and identifying some activity in there, which is of value um, in the management of um, eczema or atopic dermatitis, and in the management of uh, rhinitis. So two allergic conditions where the anti-inflammatory pro properties of the polysaccharide can be of value. And I think they're interesting examples because we're taking some quite well-known compounds that have been around for a long time and finding value in them. So it's not just about new compounds, which are, which are important, it's also about new applications for known compounds. Mm -hmm. Bruno, do you want to add anything to that in terms of uh, the importance or the use of uh, marine ingredients? Yeah, sure. Um, I would like to shift to more industrial or well-being okay. and industrial applications. Actually, our first uh, contact at Biotrend with the marine world was for a client which was developing um, ingredients for the cosmetic industry. Mm. And from a marketing point of view, I realized that uh, actually the marine sourcing of ingredients for cosmetics is quite appealing to the final consumer. Mm -hmm. uh, there's an immediate relation with something sustainable, with something natural, et, et cetera. Uh, but um, the potential of marine biotech goes well beyond that and well beyond market perceptions uh, or consumer perceptions. 
uh, as uh, Charlie alluded to, uh, there is some limitation today uh, uh, concerning the molecules and uh, speaking of molecules, uh, not only bioactives but also uh, enzymes uh, and activities uh, that can be uh, uh, accessed uh, using terrestrial resources and only a very small percentage of the biodiversity which uh, exists in the, in the seas has been, uh, has been collected, characterized, and used up to now. So the uh, potential for finding new activities out there is tremendous. And it's not only the potential. Uh, there are examples of, uh, which are already on the market, of new enzymes for the uh, bioethanol uh, industry, for example, new amylases that were isolated for, from extremophiles uh, in, in deep sea waters. So there is uh, a huge potential which is uh, actually being used and which is uh, finding new application and addressing pressing applications. Okay, good. Uh, Charlie? Um, I just come, come in on that, uh, something Bruno said there uh, at, about um, the, the potential diversity and, and really we talk about it a lot, you know, the ocean is 70% of the earth and all these big numbers and the potential and, and that is undoubtedly true and so you have both a huge biological diversity which is untapped but also a huge chemical diversity. And that's particularly true um, in my field in, in glycobiology, carbohydrate chemistry, where with microalgae, for example, which, which we do work with um, quite significantly, you have you know, estimates of 200 to 800,000 species, and only 30,000 of, of them roughly are known. And of those, only maybe 100 have had their carbohydrates characterized and only in a superficial way. So we're only just scratching the surface. And that chemical diversity combined with biological diversity does deliver um, properties which have value to the consumer or to the market. Mm -hmm. And, but it takes time. And there are large companies that are looking for those special ingredients and looking for those unique properties to add them to their products to make them more uh, marketable, to uh, realize the benefits of those um, unique properties. Absolutely. The, uh, you know, going back to pharma, they're, they're actively seeking um, for the reasons I've explained already, but also in the cosmetic market, as Bruno said, mm -hmm. that there is demand. Um, cosmetics are a little bit different because it a lot of it is about marketing and consumer perception, but there is a demand for naturals and also ethical products, which mm -hmm. tick all the sustainability boxes. So um, that, that demand is there, and um, we can kind of use that, that consumer demand as a mechanism for us. So drugs take a long time. For a company like ourselves, we're small. Drugs take a long time and a lot of money to develop. So there's nothing wrong with having some stepping stone products that'll help you get there. Um, so we do have a cosmetic, cosmeceutical ingredient which comes from microalgae. Uh, it's a species which has never been cultivated before. Uh, the polysaccharide has never been manufactured before. And we've gone to scale up, and it's about to go in you know, industrial scale. So we'll be growing at 16,000 liter, which is pretty small still by, um, by industrial standards, but big for us. And that's really exciting to take a product from discovery uh, right through to that scale and to produce kilo quantities and, and start seeing it in skin cream. So. Um, that's, and that's really fun as well. Okay, good, good. Uh, Bruno, you were uh, talking a, a little bit about your company and the optimization work that your company does. Are there some uh, new applications uh, for uh, commercial products that you're working on um, where you're seeing some increased activity for new processes, new optimizations? Can you talk a little bit about that? Uh, yes, definitely. Um, not only f uh, in the processes we are involved, uh, we are developing for clients, but uh, we're also deeply involved in uh, collaborative research pr projects, which are uh, trying to uh, bring closer to the market some, uh, some more uh, emerging and disruptive technologies. So on the client side, uh, we're working still with uh, companies addressing the cosmetic market. Uh, we also uh, are involved in uh, both on the commercial side, but in the, also in the, in the research side of the uh, biotrans activities, in the production of new anti-fouling solutions uh, for, the, uh, for the industry. And this is a good example on how marine biotech does not necessarily relate to a marine organism, but to biotech uh, applications to the uh, industry which is related with the seas. Um, 
and in another angle, uh, we, are, uh, we have been uh, working uh, for uh, two years now with uh, new uh, marine bacterial strains, uh, which are extremophiles, and that can um, grow on particular microalgae. And so they are able to use the specific sugars on uh, that uh, microalgae contain. Um, while we were doing that, uh, we realized that the profiles of sugars were quite different from the profiles of polysaccharides that we were used to when uh, using terrestrial plants. Uh, but the processes themselves are quite similar. So although we, knew, do we do need some new activities to process that biomass, uh, many of the operations that we run uh, on a daily basis in the lab that the industry runs actually and has implemented uh, can be adapted, can certainly be adapted to the processing of, of uh, marine biomass. And I'm, I'm very happy to say that this uh, uh, research has now resulted in a, in a larger uh, research program involving uh, Biotrend and uh, research uh, universities from Iceland, Norway, Sweden, and Denmark uh, in the topic on the, of the marine biorefineries. And it's something that has been talked about uh, uh, for, for a while. There have been some developments, but uh, I, I can really see some opportunities there and some activities that will enable us to fully use 100% of the macroalgae mm -hmm. biomass. And it's something that from the context that I've uh, had with this community at Biomarine, there are companies that extract a small percentage of the macroalgal biomass for their products, but there's a significant part which is, which is uh, left. Mm -hmm. And in this concept of the circular economy, trying to use 100% of the resources that we take from nature, uh, I think this uh, um, uh, marine biorefinery developments mm -hmm. will, will provide some very interesting opportunities in the near future. Hmm. Can, can you talk about that just a little bit more? Or maybe, Charlie, did you, uh, you want to jump in? I wanted to ask you a little bit about w some of the work that your company does to sort of de-risk uh, some of the th uh, challenges that are being faced by the biorefinery, uh, uh, by biorefinery companies, because it's very capital intensive. Um, you know, it's, it still uh, has a long way to go to be completely proven. Um, and so making sure that things are efficient um, and, and uh, you know, deliver the best result uh, and also reducing waste or re reusing waste uh, is something that's really important. Do you want to uh, say something or did you want to jump in on that, Charlie? I'll just uh, very shortly, very shortly comment on that. And um, uh, where we come from uh, as a company is from the most demanding uh, markets you, you can guess. We were trying and we are still trying in many projects to compete with the petrochemical industry. So. Uh, and the only driver there is cost. So you need to deliver a process which is cost and robust, and which is scalable to huge uh, capacities, which is robust batch after batch, and which is co uh, cost effective. And what we do at uh, Biotrend, uh, due to the set of people that we have, to the training that they have, to the interaction that we have with the industry, we do master some um, what can be um, regarded as typical bioengineering techniques to uh, uh, increase the yields, to specifically design control and uh, specific design new strategies or optimized strategies of processing in order to deliver the, the process. What, what we realized is that uh, many companies are focused in one particular organism. So mm -hmm. they are specialized in E. coli, or they are specialized in yeasts, or they're specialized in their own organism. Uh, one of the assets that Biotrend has and help us to really jump into this, to this area is that we've worked uh, in the, since the inception of this company, I would say with hundreds of different microbial strains. Uh, so when there's a new microbe that comes to the lab from a client, uh, we really fast we can adapt and try to figure out whether that microbe has a potential to be implemented in a project, in a process, in a real process. And at a very small scale, we can already derive some critical performance parameters in order to tell the client it is worse to proceed or this, is a, uh, this has very low chances to move forward. So we can provide critical answers quite soon without a major investment being made. Further to that, we are also extremely experienced with wor uh, in working with uh, very complex raw materials. 
not only lignocellulosic derived, but uh, uh, side streams of existing industrial plants with many different and many nasty uh, potential inhibitors in, in, in those raw materials. So um, that experience uh, as well on how to cope with those complexities help us to also adapt and to bring these, uh, this knowledge to this field of the processing of marine derived biomass. So it's, I, I would say it's the, the combination of this div the experience in diversity of biological systems in the reactors and raw materials that really helps Biotrend to, to, to help our clients in this area. Charlie? Yeah, on the, on the processing question, um, for Glycomar, we're, we're a small company focused on the early stage discovery and development. And for us, it would be great if we didn't have to worry about processing. We're not process engineers. <laughs> um, we don't have the expertise that Bruno has. <laughs> so, um, however, so, however, we, we have found that when we have a novel molecule, um, because they're polysaccharides, we can't go out to anybody really. There isn't a CMO mm -hmm. who will make that molecule for us. It just doesn't exist. Um, different if we're dealing with seaweed polysaccharides, there are big companies out there who are good at that and some, some emerging small ones. But with microalgae, for example, so we, we are having to learn how to do that ourselves up mm -hmm. to a point. And I think our, our um, approach to solving this problem of dealing with a process development is to take it as far as we can, try not to invent anything new, so to adapt what the rest of the industrial biotech industry has been doing for a long time, mm -hmm. adapt it to our purpose, um, using off-the-shelf solutions where possible, and then partner. So we have to collaborate, we're a small business, and partnership is key to our business model to work with process companies, technology companies, and product partners to take things to market. And that allows us to solve solutions probably in a much quicker way than if we try to build it from nothing. Mm. Um, can I go back to an earlier question about sure. new applications? So, yeah, so sure. Sorry to jump back. That's but, okay. <laughs> but, but I think that's, that's an interesting um, question because th this, th the, the session is about novel compounds or uh, market trends with marine compounds. And I think an important trend is new applications for molecules that have been around for a long time. Mm -hmm. So um, a great example is alginate, a hydrocolloid from seaweeds. It's in everything, but you've got companies like Algae Pharma who are here using alginate oligosaccharides for um, treatment of um, lung diseases, cystic fibrosis, COPD. Um, that's a great mm -hmm. example. Or you've got um, a company in Chile called Proteus Bio who take cyanobacterial toxins, which are usually considered a problem. Um, and they're using them for pain control. So they're developing a drug. So these things have been known for a long time, but it's about thinking about the application and the market need. Mm -hmm. And I think that's probably one of the most significant trends for me, uh, commercial trends, is new applications for old molecules. Mm. Uh, Bruno, are you seeing that as well with, uh, with your customers and clients? Are they, are they looking for support around uh, changing or uh, moving things around in terms of their process? Uh, and are you, are you focused on that? Um, since we are a process developer, uh, we do not get that much clients that are uh, involved in seeking new applications for existing molecules because these, if these molecules are already on the market, they normally already have their, um, their, their process well established. But it's, uh, I totally agree, it's, uh, it's, it's a trend in the pharmaceutical and not, in, in not only in the pharmaceutical uh, market. At Biotrend, we normally get clients that are uh, actually going out there collecting new, uh, new uh, uh, microorganisms, um, whether it's uh, uh, on uh, existing collections or going to different ecosystems in the sea and try to um, extract the potential that these collections do have, which is quite challenging, but, uh, uh, but uh, we're mainly working with uh, companies seeking new, new processes, new activities. Okay, good. Um, one of the things we had kind of talked about, and I think we were gonna throw this out, but I think I'm gonna throw it back in, because uh, I think it's something that's interesting, and Charlie, you had mentioned that it's something that you've blogged about in the past, and that is whether or not it's uh, helpful or a hindrance uh, that companies brand themselves as marine. Um, you know, I think that that's something we see a lot with consumers. You know, if, for cosmetics, is it better if it says that it comes with marine ingredients? Um, are we driving towards a customer based on the, uh, the source of the material 
or the application or the use of the material? What's, what, what's your thoughts about that? Okay, so controversial <laughs> at a biomarine conference to say marine isn't important. Um, and I'm not going to say that. So the session is about market, and I think the most important thing uh, as a company is to think about the market and the application. And so we might be a marine biotechnology company, but actually we're working in pharma or we're working in cosmetics, and we have to understand the needs of that market. So for me, it's about what the molecule does and the application and the market demand for that application. So are we a marine biotechnology company? Of course we are, but also equally we could be called a drug discovery company or a cosmetic ingredient company. And I think it's more important to think about the market than think about the source because the source can come with problems. So uh, big pharma probably don't like it. It's complicated, it's viewed as difficult to do. Um, it's not like conventional fermentation, for example. Uh, the, you've got an added level of complexity. People just aren't familiar with it, so they might view it as a little bit scary and put it down their priority list. So, so that's one end of it. But on the consumer end, I think it's, it is seen as attractive. And if you're in a, in a consumer market, then people want natural and they want something like that. Okay, Charlie, thanks so much. Bruno, we're at the end of our time. Thank you guys so much for joining us today at our, at our uh, session, and we look forward to seeing you back here in this room for the next sessions after this. Thank you so much, guys. <laughs>